I'm Audrey Dando, owner manager of Tropical Manor Motel. My husband and I bought this small motel in 1956. We had some overnight rooms, a couple cottages, and apartments on the oceanfront. And I'm going to take you on a short tour. And we put this all together so everybody would enjoy it. Uh, my, my daughter Aileen, her son Benjamin Band, it was at his instigation, my grandson and his lovely wife Partina and myself. We spent many long hours, okay? We'll take you on a tour. Okay, just to insert a little history about our family, Tropical Manor began when I bought a small motel called Tennessee by the Sea. The property was 90 feet wide by, on the ocean front by about 236 feet east to west. There were three apartments and an old house, four cottages and four new park by your door motel rooms, which were popular. Then my husband and I built six new units over the office. We lived behind the office in one room with a kitchenette. I was alone and would take care of our twin baby girls while my husband Al was away flying for three weeks at a time. Working as an international pilot for the Flying Tigers, it was very sad having Al away so much. At the time, some big attractions were in Marineland the Boardwalk and Silver Springs. I would show the guests how to get there. Motels were new at the time. There were other aging tourist houses and cabins in the area back then. Motels were unique and were the cutting edge because guests enter from the outside. They have a private outside entrance. Motels are most common in smaller cities and towns. Motels were the cutting edge style of tourist accommodations at that time. In 1956, A1A was a gravel road. There were no TV stations in the Daytona area. Later, there were three television stations. There was no air conditioning in the beginning. The going price was $4 per night for a motel room. Tropical Manor was located outside the city limits at Daytona Beach in an unincorporated Volusia County. At the time, you could not go out the oceanfront after sunset because the mosquitoes would eat you alive. I used to light on the oceanfront there tiki torches, kerosene tiki torches, to help keep the mosquitoes away so the guests could enjoy the beach at night. In the early 60s, mosquito control came and people could use and enjoy the oceanfront. My husband, Alfred Kalman's mother, lived in a house on the property before they lived a short distance away in a nice house on the river. Mr. Kelman died at the age of 72. Mrs. Kelman moved into a special large pro on our property here in 67. Okay, I have to tell you a story about an eel. One of the, all the guests would know. We used to have big, a real large, oh, I think about 67, 80 gallon tank, salt water on, in the office. And we have an eel that we would caught ourselves in the Bahamas, a big old electric eel. And of course, I was the one that always had to feed the fish. And I'm sure that many of the guests remember this themselves. That he would swim around at night, you know, and all day long, and he was about this wide. And I think he must have been about five feet long in this small tank. 
and he would get out at night and crawl around and crawl in the bedroom next to me, and I'd have to take a big old dish towel and grab him by the neck and throw him back in the tank. But some of the guests really enjoyed seeing that eel. They came back many times just to see the eel. But it was, some people like that story, some don't. <laughs> so, I bought the 90-foot oceanfront property next door called Blue Waves. They were selling, and of course you always have to buy property that's for sale next to you. Units 21, 22, 23, 27, and 28 are still here. I built the second floor on top of 21, 22, 23 in 1968, the year the girls were born. In the middle of the 60s, the 30 building was built. My twin daughters were born on July 6, 1968. We needed more rooms, so we occupied the next motel room next door, number 11. That, there was a door to keep the room more quiet for the babies to sleep. They had to sleep under dire circumstances. There was an ice machine right side of the door. The cars were starting and stopping at all, all hours of the night. It was tough to survive, but they did. It was, <laughs> many guests were requiring a swimming pool. At least they thought they could swim in the ocean. The potential guest demand was there for a freshwater swimming pool. So Al Kelman and I built a bigger pool that was typical for our size motel. We thought since we were the last ones doing it, we would be better than anybody else. So we've got the largest pool, probably still up for a motel our size, which is in the shape of a bell, has a little ding dong, and the stairs are where you go down. And, an and a bigger than average kiddie pool built for the children, which were also Aileen and Audrey. Al Kelman died suddenly of a heart attack at the age of 46. Monstrous decisions had to be made alone. Al's salary helped pay the motel bills. I wonder if I should sell the place because I couldn't meet the payments. People came out of the woodwork think, uh, thinking a young widow like myself with two small children would sell cheap. Al told me before he died, since he was in a dangerous profession, if he was ever killed in an airplane crash, Audrey, you should keep the motel and raise the children there, which I did. I struggled through it and I'm still struggling through it. <laughs> uh, okay, I met a widower, Judge Andrew in church, also a member there. A couple of years later, we got married in the same church in which we met. He was a State Farm insurance agent. I tore down two old buildings and built what we call the 40 building on the same natural sand dune. Nine units were built to rent. The nice thing about our property here is because it is kind of on an old sand dune where the, where the sand washed up, so it, when we have storms, the water runs off of it, not onto it. In the late 90s, an artist and his wife stayed with us and were paid to paint colorful murals inside and outside to give the motel a distinct Southern Florida inviting atmosphere. Many of the paintings were inspired by the Florida Keys. The paintings took two years to hand paint. Guests really enjoy and are enthusiastic about these colorful paintings. And many of them are still there today. There's also a mounted sailfish outdoors in the corner of the 40 building. The fish was a trophy from a fishing trip to Acapulco, Mexico with my husband, Judd. On a dock, we found a deep sea fishing, a small one, with a captain and a mate. They were just about closing up for the night. It was toward the end of the day, so then the weather was getting very windy and we were going home soon as we had already bought a many, a many, many other sailfish, which I still have them on my wall. While fishing, I hollered an emphatic strike. After a while, unable to continue reeling in, this six foot sailfish Gave the reel to the captain to finish bringing the fish in. I was starting to bring it in. After taking the reel, a big ocean wave came over the boat. The sail foe jumped out of the water with such a force that pulled the captain overboard. The captain was in the water holding onto the reel, floundering away, almost drowning. The water determined not to lose the fish or the boat. I mean, and Judd, so Judd brought the boat around to the small captain he pulled them back in the boat 
and the amount of the sailfish, and the sailfish is still on the wall today. So many people notice it and ask about it. But this is all part of the history. Judd passed away in 2007 after a battle with prostate cancer. Years later, I found a note from him in which Susan said, thanks, Audrey, for the good life. Little Audrey Kellerman, one of the twins, is a veterinarian specializing in reproduction of large animals at the University of Florida in Gainesville, where she also went to vet school. Oh, can you tell them a little bit about one of your most favorite awards that the Tropical Manor has been provided? Oh, that was real good up in Tallahassee, Florida, with Governor Ron, San Ron DeSantis. Uh, Tropical Manor was awarded for membership in the National Federation of Independent Business for over 25 years, being a leader in that organization. I was presented personally Shaking hands with Governor Ron DeSantis, my idol. Thank you, that was, I just loved it, thank you. Aileen, what makes the Tropical Manor so unique? Well, it's, it's very unique because it's a family-owned business. We have all been inspired by my mother in so many ways. She has put so much love and time and creativity into all of our public spaces, in all of our guest rooms. We have very extensive tropical gardens with all sorts of decorative tropical touches. Um, each of our guest rooms is unique. No guest room is like any other. They're all very comfortably and cheerfully furnished. And I'm very proud to have worked with my mother all these years and I hope to continue her legacy with her. Yeah, one of the things um, is all the guests that come Year after year, every year at Daytona Beach, from different parts of the country. And for a lot of them, they see, come to the same place, see the same people, and it feels like coming home. Right. And we welcome them like our relatives, like family. Okay, we've enjoyed you know, welcoming all of our guests for many decades, and we look forward to welcoming them for many more happy and memorable vacations at the Tropical Manor. And like I've always said to many of our guests, they said, you're coming back next year. They got their reservations already made. I said, well, if you don't come, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> <laughs>